Hi, I'm Chad with Move For a Guitar. This lesson is from our series, Music Theory for Guitar. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to harmonize a major scale with intervals. First off, download our free e-guide, Music Theory for Guitar. It contains everything that I'm talking about in this lesson, all the charts and diagrams, as well as much more, so it'll be really useful to you. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to just go download that. But I am working on it right now as I'm filming this lesson, so it may not be available as you're watching this lesson. And if it's not available yet, it'll say coming soon. And if you'd like to get notified when it is available, you can sign up for our mailing list and we'll send you a notification for when it is available and let you download it. And also if you're signed up for our mailing list, you'll receive all updated versions as well. But don't worry, you don't need the e-guide to follow along with this lesson because all the charts and diagrams will be on the screen. And also, we add at least one new lesson every day, so be sure to subscribe. This is part 2.16 from our series, Music Theory for Guitar. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So in the last lessons, I showed you how to harmonize a major scale with triads. But really, the major scale can be harmonized with any two or more notes. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to harmonize it with the interval shapes that I taught you early in this series. And we're going to start with thirds because thirds are one of the most important intervals on guitar and they're very common. So we'll start with that and then I'll show you how to do it with other intervals as well. So this is a G major scale again over the whole fretboard. And before I showed you how to harmonize with triads, you'd start in root position. This would be your first major triad. Then you go to the next set of notes. The new note you started on would become your root. And all the intervals then would change to match up to the distance between them and that root note, the new root note. So when you started, you had a major triad, then you had a minor triad, then a minor triad, then a major triad, and so on. And that just followed along with what you learned before that when you harmonize the major scale with triads, you get major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. So in this lesson, we're going to look at it a little differently. We're just going to be looking at intervals and we're going to start with thirds, like I said, and we'll start with the root note of the G major scale. We're just going to start the same way as we did before. And you should be able to see that this is a major third interval right there. So we do the exact same thing that we did with the triads. We just move up to the next note in the scale with each note. And then we end up with our new triad or our new interval, I should say. And this would then become a minor triad because this is our new root. This is a flat three compared to this root. And then we just keep doing that, move up to the next closest note in the scale. And we'll do that all the way through, just like we did with triads. So here is the starting point. This is the root note of the G major scale. So we're starting with the G note, but that's not important. This will work with any key. We're just starting in G so we have room to move up. And then this is a major third away. Then if you move up to the next notes in the scale, you get a minor third. Do it again. You get another minor third. Do it again. You get a major third. Next one's a major third. Next one's minor third. Next one's minor third and next one's major third. So that's the major scale harmonized with thirds. And you could do that on every string set. I'm just showing you starting with a six string root. And really when you're dealing with thirds, you can just think of it as triads without the fifth. So for example, this would be a major triad if you added the fifth there. Move up, this would be a minor triad if you added the fifth and so on. And, it, and then it would just be like last lesson except you're taking away that fifth. So when you're dealing with thirds, you're really dealing with the same concept as we have with the triads when we stack thirds, because you get a major triad, then minor, minor, major, major, minor, and then the last one is a minor two because a diminished, you have to have the fifth in it to make it a diminished chord. So it'd still be a minor third interval. And that's why thirds are so important. They're such an important interval because whether a third is major or minor is going to tell you whether a chord is major or minor. So as you know, a major triad is built one major third perfect fifth. A minor triad is built one 
minor third perfect fifth. The only thing you wouldn't know is whether it was minor or diminished because a diminished, you have to have that fifth in there to know whether it's a diminished or not because the only difference between a minor triad and a diminished triad is that the fifth is lowered half a step in the diminished triad to give you a diminished fifth. So that's the importance of using thirds and how you can relate them back to the triads, but you don't have to. You could just look at it like I started in this lesson, starting with your first set of thirds, which ends up being this shape, and then just moving to the next closest notes. So you would see that's a major third interval shape, then you'd end up with a minor third interval shape, then you move up to the next closest notes in the scale, you get another minor third interval shape, and so on, and then you could just relate them back to the interval shapes that I taught you early on. And you would just end up with a series of major interval shapes and minor interval shapes. Or another interval we could do it with is the fifth. So we, instead of doing the thirds, we could do the fifths. So there's two common ways to hold fifths, but one that's more common. And the first way that's a little less common is part of that triad. So if we had a triad here, we have our root here and a fifth here. So you could use that shape. But the most common shape to hold is the one that I showed you early in this series where you have this note and this note. That's a fifth. That's a perfect fifth interval shape. So if we harmonize this with fifths, it's the same concept. We would just start in root position on the first note of the major scale. We would get a perfect fifth interval shape. Then we just move each note to the next note in the scale. The new note becomes our root. And then again, we'd have a perfect fifth interval shape and we keep doing that. So if we did that with fifths, we'd start with the perfect fifth interval shape. Next interval shape would be the same, starting on the second note of the major scale. Next interval shape would be the same. Next one would be the same. Next one would be the same. Next one would be the same. And then when you hit that seventh note of the major scale, that's when it changes. And the reason it changes is because the seventh note of a major scale is if you're building and stacking in thirds, you end up with a diminished triad. And a diminished triad has a flat five in it. So when we were looking at this with triads, we had our root here, our minor third here, and our diminished fifth here. It's just now we're not looking at it as a triad, so we moved our fifth to its unison note. And that's why you end up with a diminished fifth when you hit the seventh note of the major scale when you're harmonizing the major scale with fifths. But again, you don't even have to look at it that way. You could just look at it as going to the next note in the major scale with each of the notes and the lowest note is your root, and the other note, you base that interval off of the distance from it to the root, and this is a diminished fifth interval shape. So you don't even have to think about it as relating it back to triage. You can just think about it as the lowest note is your root. The other interval name will just be based on the distance between it and the root. And then that's the seventh note of the major scale, then you'd end an octave higher back at your root that you started with. So that would be harmonizing the major scale with fifths. And we'll do one more just so we can do an interval that's not in the triad, so you don't have to relate it to triads. And that is going to be sevenths. So we start on the root note of the major scale, and we start with a major seventh interval shape because the major scale has a major seven in it. So that's how you know it's a major seven interval shape. Then the same thing as we did before, we just go to the next notes in the major scale. The lowest note becomes our new root. That becomes our new shape. The other note is based on the distance between it and that root. So if we're doing sevenths and we started in root position, we'd have a major seven interval shape. Next one would be a minor seven interval shape. Next would be minor. Next would be major. Next would be minor. Next would be minor. Next would be minor. Then we're back at major again, an octave higher. And we're going to learn a lot about sevenths in the next section, and I'll show you how to relate those to chords as well. But since you're not at that point yet, all you have to think about is the lowest note being your root note. The other interval that you come up with is just based on the distance between it and the root note. And you should know from the early lesson in this series that that's a major seven interval shape. 
or you should know also that this is a minor seven interval shape. And all these are in the e-guide as well, all those interval shapes that you can go back and review. So that's how to harmonize the major scale with interval shapes. I recommend just going through all the intervals that we covered. So you could go from minor seconds all the way up to octaves and harmonize the major scale using those intervals and you'll be able to hear what it sounds like. And every interval has its own unique sound and you'll be able to hear that as you harmonize the major scale with those intervals. And again, do it through all the string sets. I just showed you with starting with the six string root, but do it on all the string sets with the different interval shapes. And then you can not just play them in order, you know, harmonizing them in order, going through each note of the major scale in order. You can also mix it up. So for example, if we were doing sevenths, you could start in root position and then go up to the third note of the major scale and then maybe down to the second and then maybe up to the fourth and then maybe back down to the root and just come up with a melody doing that. You could just mix them up, see what sounds good and you're basically coming up with a progression using these intervals and you'll be able to write songs doing this and come up with cool sounds. So I recommend trying to do that as well, not just play them in order through each note of the major scale in order, but also mix up that order and you're gonna come up with cool sounds in your own songs doing that. And you'll really be able to lock in the sound of these different intervals as well when you do that. So this is the last lesson in this section of this series. Go ahead and move on to the next section where we're gonna dive deeper into chord construction and harmony. And we're gonna dive into seventh chords, which are really important. They come after triads. So they're again building chords, stacking thirds, but then you're building to the next third. So these are extremely important to understand just like triads. So move on to that. We're gonna cover sevenths and much more and you'll gain more knowledge on how music theory works and how it lays out on your guitar. And again, download the e-guide so you can have all these diagrams and go back and reference them anytime you need. And be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.